imagine the ones who keep acting attached to leech. I am no pastor, but actually preaching. Look up these letters and actually the read. Them. That was where it all began. Had to put in work. Every day we got it in. We chased all our dreams and now they can't believe it. We make it look easy. You currently locked in to the coldest podcast in the land. I'm your boy, B. Jones, a.k.a. Bolo, and you know when I'm pulling up to the porch. I can't pull up without my dog. What's going on, y'all? It's your main man here, Big Smitty, a.k.a. D-Nice. And you heard what Bolo just said. This is the porch. Welcome. We are back again, y'all, on another beautiful day on the porch. I see Bolo got his ball stayed on, man. Mm -hmm. You repping hard right now. How you doing? Bless, highly favored, man. Ten toes down. You know we can't get on the porch unless we say God is good. All the time, the brother. All the time, man. man. And uh, a little rainy in Indiana right now, man. So you know, moving and grooving. Surprised. You know what I'm saying? Throw a rain jacket on. So shout out to shout out to the old the old faithful. Yes, man. You know that's one thing about Indianapolis, man. It's gonna rain, snow, sleet, hail, get hot right. and cold in the same damn day. So uh, it wouldn't be home without it. And uh, like I said, man, we so excited, man, for this special guest that I'm about to bring in. But first, real quick, we got to pay our bills. Yes, sir. And we got to shout out our brand sponsor, man, Bet Online, man. Right now is the best time to use Bet Online for all your gambling and sports needs. It's NBA season. It's March Madness is underway. Uh, go to betonline.ag, man, for any of you gamblers out there who are trying to make some real money. I use Bet Online, Bolo use Bet Online. And it's yes, the sir. place to be, man. Use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V to get your 50% plus welcome bonus. But without further ado, man, if you follow me on the Code JB Show of Big Smitty, then this is a very recognizable face. If you don't, then you're in for a treat, man. This guy right here is a retired NFL vet, Colorado legend. He's a man of the trenches, offensive lineman, defensive lineman. And he's my brother, the one and only Matt Machesi. Welcome to the porch. How you doing, my guy? What's up, man? How are you? Thanks for having me on this uh, Thursday evening. It's raining in Indy. There's three feet of snow in Denver oh, right now. I saw gosh. my door, dog. Like, Damn. I no bullshit. Like, what? Yeah, it's ridiculous. It, school's been shut down for two days. It ain't even worth going outside. It's terrible. Well, then I'll, I'll take the rain, then. Look, let me not complain too much, then. <laughs> it's all perspective. I, I didn't think, yeah. I didn't realize it would still be snowing at this point of the year in Colorado. Yeah, March is like our worst month. We get hammered in March. Damn, that's crazy. Well, stay, so stay so, right so look, but I'm always, I've never been to Colorado. What are the summers like? Mm. Hot, dry, there's no humidity really, but just like you said, you can get all the different weather patterns in Indy in one day. It will, it will go from, you know, 35 degrees and snowing sideways in the morning to 80 degrees and all That's of it will crazy. be gone in the same day here in Denver a lot of the time. We're just getting hammered right now with a with this cold front that pushed in and it's been snowing sideways for two days straight. So Damn. at least it's an opportunity to not do anything, I guess. Facts. Yep. Get some hot cocoa, get some get some, some chili or something, or some, some type of like warm type of food and just comfort right food, dog. You know with that. <laughs> well again man we appreciate you for hopping on here man we're definitely gonna dive into this all things matt mcchesney pause and just kind of learn more about you um one question that we love to kind of start off our conversations with it sounds simple but in reality it's kind of deep who is matt mcchesney hmm. who is matt mcchesney uh look I, i'm just a, a humble and hungry individual that has gotten everything in my life through grind and blue collar uh, it's why, you know, it's why I'm so adamant about teaching that way. Um, but, you know, when it comes down to who I am, I'm more than just a football player, more than just a media guy. Uh, father first. You know, I love my boys more than anything. I've got two unbelievable sons and 14 and 10 years old who are next in line here, who are, who are doing big things. And, you know, family's huge for me. And, uh it's just that's that's a loaded question and it's a good one because it really makes you think about who mm -hmm. you know describing yourself is always tough especially with you know dudes like us and it, it's it's hard to sit here and, and talk good about yourself uh when you should be so that, that's a good question man I, I gotta think about that one a little bit more but i would say uh you know football's fleeting media's fleeting all that shit it comes and goes it, it, it's what you do it's not really who you are uh, but you know, being being a father, being a son, 
uh, you know, being a brother, those are things that are, you know, being a friend, being actually somebody that you can rely on. I, that's, I think that's really, really fleeting in today's world. People that you can actually, you know, say even little things like, you know, uh, can I rely on you to do this for me? And even if it's a little thing, right, being able to actually rely on somebody, I'd like to think that I'm that kind of guy. Uh, so, you know, uh, I, I, I'd like to think that Matt McChesney is just a, a, a good dude that is, says what he does and does what he says and loves mm -hmm. hard and b believes deep. And, uh, you know, one day when they, they uh, burn me and, and spread me on full, so maybe somebody will say something nice. Mm. That's, That's deep real. right there. That's deep. That's deep. That is. Well, uh, one That's thing right that he mentioned. Too, baby. It's always one take with me. You know how I do. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. I love it, man. And one thing that you mentioned within your answer here is uh, you said a couple of times was being a father. I'm the only yep. one on here who doesn't have any kids yet. I know Bolo has two two young boys of his own as well. So mm -hmm. just talk to me about how being a father, you would say, changed you or impacted you from mm. the, kind of when you look back at like, I don't know, 20-year-old Matt, you know, right. in college doing your thing to where you're at now and just being a father, having these two young young men, I'll call them young men, growing underneath them. You, you're seeing them develop. Like, how would you say they have impacted your life? Oh, man. Look, I, I always used to hear, like, you don't want to have kids when you're young. And I look back at it now, and I wish I would have had them when I was young. Mm. Because it it, it hyper-focused me like you would never believe, bro. It was just like... So, just the, the story with Nicholas, and Nicholas is 14 and Logan is 10. And Nicholas is... His namesake is my brother, who passed. And... Mm. We found out, my ex-wife and I found out that we were pregnant with him on his on his, my brother's birthday, my wow. fifth year in the league. So I was sitting in my locker with the Broncos, you know, and it's it's July 22nd, yeah. and which is Nick's birthday. And she calls me and she's just like, look, we're we're pregnant, uh, you know, and it's Nick's birthday. So it was a it I'm not the most religious guy in, on on earth, but Man, there's signs. And when mm -hmm. when I'm always looking like for, I always say I haven't been blessed with faith, but then I look back at it and I'm extremely blessed. So maybe there's something there that I'm just not looking at. Right. And that was a moment in time for me where it really, you know, on that day I, I made a vow to myself, I'll, I'm not going to drink anymore. And I haven't had a drink since. Like it's oh, been wow. 15 wow. years since I've had a, a sip of alcohol because I grew up in an environment where I well, wasn't productive and I didn't want my boys to be around that. And I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I wish I would have done it. And everything happens for a reason when it's supposed to. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't married in college. It would have been a different situation. But looking at it like, you know, big picture, I wish I would have had the hyper focus that my children brought mm -hmm. with when I was younger. You know, could have, would have, should have. But right. that and then the... the opportunity to to be a visual role model on a daily basis for my kids not just tell them what's right and wrong but show them and i you know i have a big social media presence and i put everything on it and i i think that if i want my boys to see somebody productive in the gym i need to go be productive mm. i need to be shape if they, if I, if I, I'm not going to hire somebody to go shovel the snow, I'm going to go do it with them. I'm not going to, you know, we're not going to go, I'm not going to call AAA if we get a flat. I'm going to teach them how to change a tire. Like that's, that's really the, I, I'm, I'm so blessed and no offense to girl dads, but I'm so blessed to have two boys because I just, it's my opportunity to take everything my father taught me and all the great positive role models on the male side in my life. You know, my mother is the matriarch of our family. She runs the businesses and she's really the baddest MF -er alive. And I take a lot of what she taught into this as well. But it's one of the reasons I got so fired up with Coach, Coach JB the other day about females working in the NFL. Like when you come from an environment where the female is the breadwinner and she's mm -hmm. the one busting her ass every day and running the businesses, it gives me a different perspective. So right. I, I just look at the opportunity to teach uh, to to be a, a positive example, both you know how to how to be a man, in my opinion, and do things right, but also how to treat people, uh, how to treat females, how to make sure that you know, even though I am divorced, like 
there's no vindiction with their mother. We're still in a partnership together, raising them. They need to see that. So the examples set are way more important than the examples spoken, in my opinion. Absolutely. I think for me, too, like, you know, I got a two year old and a four year old and my four year old. Now he's at the point where he sees a lot of things and he starts to like speak it like he's like a yep. parent now. And a lot of things now he's like a sponge. So <laughs> I think for fatherhood, for me, you know, obviously in the last four years, I've learned a little bit more about myself than anything as well. You know, what I mean, from patience um, to like you said, kind of being on a straight and narrow, you know, I got to tighten up because I always got these eyes that are on me and you know my parents you know my father he did a good job with raising me too so a lot of the things that he taught me I'm instilling in my kids as well and I think we I really have the advantage because you know obviously no parent is perfect there are some loopholes there maybe some some spaces where we can fill in and now I'm making sure when my kids are older I'm not you know missing those small little things that I'm thinking about as an adult like I'm filling in those gaps you know where maybe you know the gaps were there when I was when I when I was younger so I think it's is is very impactful you know what I mean to have you know fathers you know on the show and people to be listening and like you said changing tires and kind of doing all that stuff because you know the way the world is kind of turning you know around now and, and you know wherever it may be going I think you still need that great leadership and that great guidance man to continue to create great, great human beings so amen I'm right. Yeah. I'm right with you with that one. Smitty, have some kids already, dog. What the hell? Got to, bro. I know, man. I'm waiting. When that, whenever the lady's ready, man, I'm ready. Like, I'm at a point now, like, if she told me she was pregnant today, I would I would be excited. Hey. Like, I wouldn't be mad. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, people always say you're never, like, fully ready, per se. You know, you always, in my mind, I'm like, well, I need more money. I need, to, I need this. I need that. It was like, well, listen, bro, you're always going to want more money or another opportunity. Like, once you have kids, you'll figure it out. And I know I, Thanks. you know, I'm excited for. I see other little babies around. And I, now I start smiling and thinking about, damn, like you know, a, a yeah, little Smitty would be kind of cool just right keep now. Practicing, right? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> practicing. I'm gonna keep practicing. We we gonna talk about that a little bit more. Uh, we get we start getting into those questions, man. I want to reverse a little bit, man, and talk about, um, you know, Colorado, man. You you wear it on your sleeve. You know, a lot of people hopped on the bandwagon last year when Coach Prime got there. You're not a fan of Colorado. You are Colorado. You played there. You rep it. You're, you've been there during the down years. You're there and everything in between, man. Talk about what, you know, the, the university means to you. Uh, it's a special place. It's the only place I really ever wanted to play. I fell in love with them when I was a kid. Being right down the street and growing up down the street and sneaking into Folsom when I was a kid and watching, you know, my idols that became, you know, my boys. It, it's 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 special and I always say this but throughout since I got done playing and started Six Zero Football Academy here in Denver we've been helping so many kids and we've sent a bunch of guys up there and we've also had countless dudes go other places you know out of the state as well we're in the business of helping the kids more than just the university but you know I've found that there's a big difference between being an alum and supporting and being in business in the football business and having to work around your allegiances, allegiances. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I got to do business with Nebraska and Oklahoma and Kansas state and Utah. I don't necessarily want to, but that's what it is. So, mm -hmm. right, you know, you've right. got to, you've got to separate that. And as you get older as a businessman, you know, you, you, you realize that and figure that out. Uh, but Colorado's a special place. It's always it's been there for me uh, since day one. It's it's a, where I I got the opportunity to go really learn how to play the game. You know, Coach Barnett. Uh, I used to always joke that he used to reform us, not really recruit us. We were a pretty wild ass bunch when we got there, and I think they kind of lost a little bit of that when they they fired GB and went into like the politically correct era of college football is what I call it. Like there, there's a 20 year span in Boulder where feelings were more important than football mm -hmm. and coach prime brought back the football is more important than your feelings part. Mm -hmm. And even though they went four and eight last year, they lost six games by one score and they only really got handled twice. And I, I really think that that's a huge thing to build on moving into next year. You know, it's a very special place where football is important. Um, and, you know, it's it's given me the platform and the opportunity to do what I do. It You know, without the University of Colorado, without everything I learned there, I don't I don't know if I would have had the same success or the same 
ability to over overcome adversity. You know, I've mm -hmm. had a lot of crazy shit happen to me in my life and a lot of opportunities where I could have quit and a lot of opportunities where I had people telling me to quit. And because of the little things that, you know, Coach Chris Wilson, who's the defense coordinator now for the Roughnecks uh, in, the, in the UFL, and I'm I'm so excited for that to start. I don't know if I've ever been more excited for spring yeah. football in my damn life. <laughs> I don't even know why. I'm just jonesing for it. Yeah. I can't wait to watch it. But, you know, he used to always – he used to ride me hard. And he was my – I had the same defensive line coach and the same head coach the whole five years I was at CU. Yeah. And that is That's so true. rare these days. It very rarely happens. And I was so blessed to have that happen. You know, and Coach Wilson was always preaching, you know, the world's a bear. And it, you're either going to hunt it and kill it, and you're going to have a pelt on the wall, or it's going to eat you. And mm -hmm. no one's going to care. You're just going to be the next d dead hunter. And, you know, you've got to fortify. You've got to be able to be tough enough to overcome all these, all the world and everything that comes with that, but also – the you know every other person out here that wants to take it from you and you can't you can't walk around angry but you also can't walk around aloof yeah. so you know i i know that i'm pretty hardcore cat but i learned that from the people in boulder and then it was just fine-tuned in the national football league by guys like bill parcells and shit so you know the the what i love about football and really the what university of colorado taught me the most is you know, when I say, like, our mantra, and it's one of the reasons why I'm so – I talked to Coach Prime about this on my show, Zero to Six, and we went up and talked to him and interviewed him. The fight song and the tradition and everything. And he, you know, he kind of slow played that a little bit. I mean, we got to win first and yada, yada, and I respect that. Yeah. But when I say things like the pride and tradition of the Colorado Buffaloes will not be entrusted to the timid or the weak, mm. that is – I don't just say – that's not something that we run on the wall and I'm just saying it and I'm reading it. Like, I, I believe that shit in my heart and in my core. Mm -hmm. And I try and live like that every day. And that that I think that's the difference in liking something and needing something. Like, you know, the, the state that I operate my business in here in Colorado, there's a lot of bankers who like football. There's very few football players who need football. Mm -hmm. So I'll take the need guy every day, even if he's mm -hmm. a little less athletic, because the like guy, when it's hot or if there's two feet of snow on the ground or – He's got to play a guy who really can get it. He may not like it that night anymore, and then his emotions change. So, you know, football in Colorado specifically, and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but it's taught me how to operate from an emotionalist standpoint. I don't allow my emotions to dictate whether or not I'm going to do my job or how I'm going to do it. The standard's the fucking standard. We have to do it the right way. I love that. Hey, Smitty, I don't know if you remember this. Uh, so we... Back at Ball State, we had a coach, uh, Coach Pete Limbo. Um, he's been around a little bit. I think he's the head coach now at uh, Buffalo. Buffalo. Yeah. And um, he used to always say, and I think I didn't really, it didn't really resonate to me until I was an adult and I was experiencing things through life. But he was like, hey, when you're going through something, it's important to play with enthusiasm rather than emotion, mm. right? Because when you're playing with emotion, right, like it's, it's a wave, right? It, it comes and goes. You don't know if you can control it or not. You don't know kind of, you can be off the hinge, right? But enthusiasm, right, is controllable. You know where it's at, right? You're up here. But enthusiasm is so, I mean, I'm sorry, the emotion, the other piece of it, right? Being emotional is just so up and down. You know, you're exhausted. You get through the first quarter emotional, then like you're, you're drained, right? You don't know how to finish the game. But if you are stable, right, kind of high character guy, got the enthusiasm, then, you know, you're going to play all four quarters. So I like that. Wow. I love that. I love that, man. It's just so much to football is correlated to the real world in life. Facts. And uh, one thing that you mentioned too, Matt, was that a lot of what you went through in the real world in life, you were able to get through it because of football. I want to kind of mm -hmm. ask you this, though. What would you say was the toughest part that or toughest thing you went through at Colorado? I know I know your journey was unique. It wasn't always just, you know, easy, squeezy, cover girl. Like, you went through some <laughs> shit, you know what I'm saying? So, like, when you look, when you kind of look back and reflect – what would you say was the hardest part of it? And then also, sec second to that, how did you overcome it and just, you know, and get through it? Well, some of it was self-inflicted, dumb kid stuff, like fighting and drinking and partying. We all um, do that. <laughs> yeah, but then some of it was like, I got, I was one of the original internet pirates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, I was one of 256 people in the entire country that was sued for downloading music, the RIAA. 
came and rapped on my door and they were like, are you Matt McChesney? And I was like, you know, I'm Matt McChesney, Doug. And they were like, you're served. And it was like a bunch of music and porn. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But like that, that was very humbling. And, you know, it was embarrassing and something I had to overcome. And like, they took my computer from me and shit. I had an air conditioner dropped on me in the same year, like in meetings. Yeah, no bullshit. They walk in, just hand a bunch of like paperwork off. They walk out. The door slams. The air conditioner falls out of the ceiling on me. Dislocates my shoulder really bad. Mm. I like it directly related to my leg breaking. I took a shot to go play. Couldn't feel my arm. It collapsed. My leg couldn't support the torque, and it, my leg snapped, and I missed the whole season. Damn. You know, like that. That was some crazy stuff that happened at CU. And then, like my senior year, getting ready for the draft. Uh, my brother Brandon passed away. We had to deal with that on on just right on the on the page. And then in August of that same year, I signed with the Rams and I had gone out to St. Louis and worked myself into the rotation. And like three days before training camp opened, I got West Nile virus. And my mother wow. found me on the floor like in in seizure. I was in the hospital. I lost a ton of weight. And like it really messed with my lung capacity and like almost killed me on a ventilator and shit and the the rams check this out so the rams send me a certain so the day before my agent tom mills at a sense port management who does a great job him tom and jack they they call charlie army the gm for the rams in st louis and they're like look this is what's going on he can't report he's in the hospital the doctor says he can't leave blah 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 and they're like cool we're gonna put him on pup pup and we'll get him healthy and we'll move forward he's done a great job for us well the next day they sent a certified letter to the hospital, dog. They didn't even call anyone. They just sent a letter to the ho- You are cut for failure to report. So, mm-hmm. like, I'm sitting there trying to fight for my life. No fault of my own. Sick. And, like, they're cutting me. So, that was my first little taste of what the National Football League really is. Not for long. But, you know, like, it, a lot of crazy stuff happened at CU. And then it, it went straight into the NFL and continued. And it started with West Nile. And, I got there and it it took me 10 weeks of like training and getting back to get able to go work out, work out for the Jets, got signed, you know, went through that entire process and whatnot. And uh, three years, two and a half years into my time with the Jets, right before training camp, my brother Nick died. And Mm -hmm. we, we had to deal with that and everything that came with it. And then they moved me from, defensive line to offensive line so i had like a week to figure that out and i had to like learn the whole playbook there's just so much adversity that comes with the game right and that's not even counting breaking my leg four times and surgeries and all this other shit that's just football related right Right. that's just football stuff when you add in all this other crazy stuff that just continues to happen that's what i talk about with i don't know how many people told me when i when i had an air conditioner dropped on me you should quit I don't know how many people told me when I broke my leg because of it, I should quit. I don't know how many people told me I should go get a real job and just pay for the RIAA. And, you know, maybe this, maybe this isn't for you. You should quit. When I had West Nile virus, my whole family telling me to like, go get a job and this isn't for you anymore. I remember standing in my living room, like y'all want me to quit and walk away from this? No way. Like it's just so many people in my life told me to go one way because it was easy for them Mm. instead of, trying to support me and stand behind me and say, look, we understand this is really tough and we're going to support you as you go this way. So it's one of the reasons I think that I'm so motivated when people, like when people tell me what I can't do, the minute I hear someone be like, you can't do that. You don't know what you're talking about. You're not good at this or good at that. The fire inside of me rages like a thousand suns, bro. Mm. And I just go to work and there's, I wish my body would have, would have held out a little bit longer but you know just to put the icing on the cake when talking about my body <laughs> my career ended off the field with my best friend in the world who's now in prison you know Justin Bannon played for a long time in the NFL essentially running me over going like 50 miles an hour in a golf cart going downhill with two 300 pounders and it hit me in the left leg like drug me under it fucked me up really bad you know, it, it forced me to re- retire. Like I couldn't play anymore. And wow. that's another thing. Like that's a really embarrassing way for your career to end. But again, I, 
then I had people asking if I was going to quit living. And like that, that was like, it was really emotional, bro. And I was very upset. And mm. I really dealt for a long time for a good four or five years. I dealt with a lot of like suicidal thought. And if mm. I don't know if this is the right place for me. And obviously everything I chased, there's always, I, I had a victim mentality, Schmidt, mm. where I would say, all of this is happening to me. And then I, I did a lot of self-reflection and a lot of therapy and a lot of getting in tune with myself. Again, wanting to be a good example for my children. And then I, I realized that it's not something that, that was happening to me. It's just something that happened. Mm. And my reaction is what's wrong. And I need to figure out, even if it's being used against me or somebody's pointing a finger and laughing and it's a fucking joke and, you know, yada, yada, my life became like a, a sitcom. My reaction to it is how it's how it's going to play out. And I'm either going to be a a story of triumph where we don't even talk about the shit that happened. You probably didn't even know that. Yeah. Wow. Right? So I don't I, I don't it's not something I crutch around with me. But there are certain guys that make mistakes and all you hear about their entire life is the mistake they made, not how they overcome it. And I wanted to make sure that the mistakes I made and everything that was stacked up against me throughout my life I wanted to make sure that wasn't the narrative being played out when you heard Matt McChesney. And I wanted to make sure that my sons didn't hear that narrative when they hear Matt McChesney. And I'm very proud of the fact that all that happened and I'm still, you know, going to work every day and changing lives and six year old football Academy's rolling and the relationships we have with everybody that's because, and you guys both know this being ex players. It's that only comes with earned yeah. Like you can only gain that respect and the daps and the love and the, the, the brothership that every football player has the camaraderie that we all share that you, when you walk in the, you're in the fucking airport and you played with some guy for a week in 2012 or some shit and you see him and you're like, oh, because that, that's, that's real shit. That's what this is. And people don't understand it. And I'd rather have that earned respect than ever like, put myself in a position where I felt cheapened or weakened because of something that happened. Everything that's happened to me in my life, it's, it's hardened the shield and the, the, the armor that I wear on my body. So, mm. you know, there's, there's really nothing that could break me down at this point because of all that shit and full circle. Like that's, that's really, you know, what I've learned from all the adversity. Wow. wow. That, that was beautiful, man. Like I, I think, um, everything you just said is so important for all the listeners, you know, that's, you know, tuning in right now. Everyone goes through shit. We all know that, you know, in life, sport, whatever path you're in. Uh, I think your story is just inspirational because it lets people know that no matter how much shit you go through, you can get up, brush yourself off and keep Every on day. going. And there is light at the, at the end of the tunnel. Even when I mean, in the, in the, mo the worst part of your life, it might seem like it's like everything's bad. Everything's horrible. There's no light. There is a light. If you just keep on going, keep believing. Mm -hmm. and like you said, all the things that happened to you or for you or just happened, it, it built actually built you up to the man you are today. And now you feel like you're fucking untouchable. Like whatever, whatever That's happens, you like, know, there's good. nothing, there's nothing that anybody can do to me, say to me, nothing that could that's gonna put me in like the corner and I'm gonna be over there like, what are we gonna do? I'm just gonna be like, oh well. All right, now we got to deal with this shit and we will deal with it and we will overcome it and it will be a positive moving forward. And that's it. Like the, if you only make it one way, if there's only one option and that option is victory and overcoming it, well, then I guess we just have to keep fighting until that's the option. Yeah. I love that. Makes it really I love, love that. Real quick, Matt. So obviously transitioning, you know, um, Football ended for you. I think the biggest thing that people talk about, you know, ex-athletes, you know, obviously people who aren't fortunate enough to play in the NFL or people who seasons in is like being a regular person in society now. Right. So like transitioning from like the athlete to just that normal citizen, um, you know. I guess talk talk a little bit about like the transitioning piece and maybe help out because we got a lot of athletes that listen to this too, you know, right. ex NFL athletes, you know, former college athletes. I think the biggest transition for people, right, is knowing that you're not an athlete, no more essentially in that capacity and you got to continue to move forward, 
you know, and try something new um, or, or develop a new identity, essentially. It's hard. I mean, that shit is hard, man. Everybody knows it. It's real hard when you've been wrapped up in that for so long. But I will say this, you know, we're all equal, but we're not the same. Mm. And Herm Edwards told me that a long time ago when I was a rookie. I was sitting next to Curtis Martin in the meeting room, and he said, shit, 95 and 28, equal, but they ain't the same. I ain't going to treat 28 the way I treat 95. And I'm like, well, shit, Herm. And I, you know, thinking about it, it makes sense. So I, that's what I would, that's what I say to all the, the ex players, guys who used to play. You're always going to keep that. You're always going to carry it around, but mm-hmm. don't, don't, don't be ashamed that it ended. Right. Everything ends. Mm-hmm. It's okay that it ended. It's okay. It's if, if, if you were only doing it to go be a fucking multimillionaire, you were doing it for the wrong reasons, mm-hmm. period. Because it, it, foot, I make more money not playing football than I did playing. And right. I thought that that was going to be like the end-all, be-all. Oh, my God, I can make so much money and be famous and all this shit. But it's not real. It's fleeting. They can just – it's not real. And now being in charge of my own hustle in the real world, I find that I, when I'm not looking for somebody to pay me, I can get, go make as much money fucking money as i want mm-hmm. i can stack chips right We're always it's in that poem right Schmitty? Yeah. that's how it goes baby every day <laughs> so i i think that the lessons learned in football it should outweigh the the mental strain and the agony of losing it because when mm-hmm. i lost it the way that i lost my career and how embarrassing it was like I felt like someone died. Like I felt like I, like that guy, the football player, Matt on that day died. Like I got hit by a car and died on the, on the golf course. Mm -hmm. And a part of me died with him. And I went into a depression because I couldn't play anymore. And I had took me a long time to figure out that I had asked my coach, why are you really depressed? Why are you really upset? Is it because you can't play anymore? Is it how it ended? And it really came back to, I really love this shit. Like I, I fucking love ball so much and it was everything I ever wanted to do. I would have played it for free. I just like putting on a helmet and running through a motherfucker. And I love the camaraderie and I love the team and I love the travel. And I just, I never understood the catch where you would walk into practice and he'd be sitting in the corner. Like we have to practice today and it's so hot. And I hate that fucking guy. And you know, it's, it's, Football, when it ends, it some guys get to retire and like ride off into the sunset with two hundred million dollars in the bank, and it's still super hard for them. Mm-hmm. So, like one thing that people just need to understand out here in the world is, and look, I'm sorry if your job or what you did in your life doesn't bring you this kind of passion and doesn't bring you this kind of like zest and this kind of of like yearning to go do it every day, but the fact that everyone I know had to deal with some kind of mental strain and like they're in tears when they can't play anymore. And it's like someone losing, it's like losing a family member. That's how I know how important it is. Like it's so Mm -hmm. important. And now I understand what all the old heads would talk about when they say it's fleeting and it's going to end soon and you better invest all of it into every day. Now I, I get it now being an old head. So I missed it. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, the the values and everything I've learned from it and the, the structure and the, you know, everything that I can now take into my own business, Six Year Football Academy, check it out, Six Year Football Academy dot com. Everything that we do there and all the kids we've helped, it's all based on the everything I learned from the game and the foundation that I was able to build underneath it. So I missed the shit out of it. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I think all the hard stuff is what I miss the most. It's crazy. Everything that you would like walk in dreading to do. I look back at it now and I go, man, I I don't know anybody else that did that shit. I don't know anybody else that could, that could do it. I don't know anybody else that could, you know, that has their pension or, earned this or that or went to scholarship went to school on a scholarship and balled the fuck out there's a lot of people that have that goal and i don't know very many of them that accomplished it and you have to look back and it's okay guy every ex-player i'm saying to you to this i'm saying this to you man to man 
it is okay to pat yourself on the back and to be your own biggest fan. Mm. If you're not going to do it, no one's going to do it for you. We are mercenaries still to the day when you don't play anymore. We're still mercs. So it's okay to be your own biggest fan. That's not cocky. That is extremely confident and knowing that you are who you are. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that more guys should be a little bit more proactive in talking nice about themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and, I, and I'll, I'll shut up about this after I say this, but think about like Schmitty, if you, you and I are homeboys, right? If I called you, and on a bad day when I'm talking to myself super negatively and I'm like, Matt, you're dumb motherfucker, blah, 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 blah. You're so stupid. You screwed this up. God, you just go sit in your bed all day and fucking just sit there and, you know, feel sorry for yourself, you, you bitch, blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, brother, if I called you as my homie and talked to you like that, how would you react? You'd be like, man, fuck this guy. I don't want to hear this. This is super negative. Right. So why would I talk to Like, that's what I'm saying. Why would you ever say that to yourself? Mm. And it takes so long to learn that. So all of the positive things that football brings from Colorado to the NFL to Niwot High School, where I started all the craziness, everything that I bring now from a coaching perspective, all of the positive things, that's where you need to rest your head. All the negative shit, that's where you need to learn. That's where you learn to understand that the foundation is built off of all the the adversity and overcoming everything mm -hmm. so you can have the comfort on the other side that's real man and he out here dropping Easy. gems bolo man all Easy. our listeners i hope y'all taking notes hope you got your notebook your pen your marker and your highlighter Boy. if you forgot some press rewind and go back and listen to what he just said because he give you real life gems right now yes, one thing sir. that we gotta highlight obviously you mentioned it a couple times is that transition and the way you transition has been so beautiful and seamless because you have a beautiful business that's booming right now. All the B's, I just said, beautiful business booming. It's triple B. Oh, <laughs> zero to 60. Tell people what exactly is zero to 60. Where did the name come from? But what is it? More importantly, what is it as a business? So zero to 60 is our podcast and it's on the bleed network. We do it pretty much every day at 10 AM, but sometimes we change the time for the guests. We've had coach prime on and wed and Steve Atwater. And we got Max Crosby coming on deck. We just had Derek Wolf on. And that's really the mouthpiece for Six Zero Football Academy, which we started Six Zero Football Academy 15 years ago. And we put over 500 guys into college, countless hmm. into the NFL. We've got Drake Nugent and Rosengarten and Casey Roddick and a bunch of other guys up this year for the NFL again and another great crop coming up next year. But it, it's really just everything that I didn't get to accomplish on the field, I, I had to find a funnel for that. And hmm. I looked at my home state and, you know, said, okay, they need help. We need help with recruiting. We need help with development. There's so many kids here that can play. Let's start at the basement level and help the high schoolers. And then that will get us in front of the college guys, which will in turn get us in front of the NFL guys. And I came to find out that I was already in front of the college and NFL guys because that's the world I was in. So the ability to go in and help a high school kid now and treat them like a college or NFL player teach them everything, all the whiteboard work we do. Again, I'll just reiterate and spit it off really quick. So when they walk in and we're in the meeting room and like we're on Twitch now, so Six Zero Academy on Twitch, we're going to be doing all of our meeting room stuff there. We can go in and, and watch and get involved. I tell this kid, okay, you just got here. You're going to be a junior. You want to play at Michigan. All right. Well, when you walk in talk to Coach Moore, who's a badass and he wants to understand that you, he wants to know that you understand scheme and he hands you a marker and he goes, well, I'm glad you're on this trip, but you're one of McChesney's guys at Six Zero Football Academy. We've got five on the team, so we know how they operate. We need to see if you're mentally on the same level they are on. So we need you to get up there and draw us uh, 11 three-by-one tight end dice select alpha, close bunch right, nasty, understand <laughs> stacks, strong safety force, cover one fence man. And we need to know where the squeeze gap's at, how are we going to run Gator to the field and Sally left. And all this is pre-snap stuff, so chop, chop. And I and that that is really what we do in there. I have my master's degree in football. So playing both ways has given me the ability to now siphon this information and this passion into the next guy who if as long as he'll absorb it and then be humble enough to say, I don't know, coach, I don't know what you're talking about, so I can teach him. That's what six year football academy has become. And 
the fact that we've changed so many lives that we've got guys that, you know, like Ben Garland and his career of going to the Broncos as a D lineman and coming into transition from D line to O line and then playing and God knows how many games playing for 10 years and starting two Super Bowls. That's success. But like watching Mike Pinnell the other night in the Super Bowl, absolutely ball out and working the back key shit that we've been working on in the gym for years. You never know when that opportunity is going to come. All those reps that we did and everything he's done on his own. And then all of a sudden the back key becomes prevalent in the Super Bowl against Trent Williams. So, you know, 6-0 is a pretty special place. 6-0 Football Academy or 6 strengthcom uh, online. And then the, the Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok and, and Twitch feeds are all the same. Um, it, it's uh, the business is one thing. The the ability to change people's lives and to get them to invest in themselves. That's why we do it. I love that. I love that, man. Make sure y'all support, man. Follow on all social media uh, accounts and pages. If you're in Colorado, you probably already know about it, but for some reason you don't, you've been underneath the rock. You just heard it. Tap in, tune in. If you're trying to get that real work, man, we're going to try this a little bit here to uh, uh, a little bit more, just some of our random, just, Fun questions, I'll call them. Just fun questions around the, you know, around the world. I can't wait for this, Matt. <laughs> first of all, let me ask you this though: Have you heard about former Vandy quarterback Mo Hassan, who claims the Italian mob approached him? Like, have you heard that story? Yes, yeah, yes or no? The three hundred thousand dollars and like the mob approached him and told him to flip a game. Yeah, let's, oh. let me let, let me ask you, Tay, as a former player. First of all, a do you believe him? No. But then number two. So you don't believe him. Okay, boom. No, fuck no, I don't believe him. <laughs> like, do I believe... First of all, dog, if you're... The mob doesn't like the media. Not everybody's John Gotti. Right. John Gotti loved the media. Every other mob boss in the world was like, fuck the media, I don't want to be on the front page of the newspaper. This, this seems like clickbait to me. Like, come on, dog. The, the mafia members who offered you 300 grand, did they come knock, knock, knocking at your door after you sold them out on social media? Seriously, that's a good point. Like that, you know how embarrassing that is that they couldn't bag a fucking 18 year old kid. And then the other thing is, you're the, he's the quarterback at Vandy, right? He was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, easiest fucking money ever made. Vanderbilt's awful. You don't even have to, you don't even have to throw the game, dog. You just have to take the money and yeah, show up. They're going to get murked anyway. What is wrong with this kid? That's a good-ass point right there. I mean, come on, dog. It's not like he's asking. <laughs> they're not asking him to throw the game at Ohio State in the playoff. Like, he's talking about Vanderbilt, homie. Like, if, I've seen Vanderbilt lose, like, fucking 100 to nothing at home before and shit. So, <laughs> yeah. So what are we talking about? He had a chance to lay $300,000 in his pocket, cash, and he didn't do it. At Vanderbilt, where he wouldn't even have to throw the game, he would just go out, go out there and throw. Just go out there and play quarterback. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. You hey just Matt, just, just be yourself. Just go out there and just, lose. Just do you. And then also, <laughs> also, on top of all that, he doesn't take the money. They still lose, and then he comes out and calls the mafia out. Like, dude, do you? Oh, yeah. the, what? How? I mean, come on, Bolo. Dog. What's your I thoughts, Bolo? You I gotta ask you, Bolo. Good, but this is real dumb. Yeah, I mean, like Matt said, I think it's clickbait, man. I mean, Vandy, you know, for one. I mean, you guys aren't great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just, I mean, the writing's on the wall, you know. And then obviously, like, like you said, Matt, like the mob is one of those things where it's a close-knit, like they're behind closed doors. Like last thing they want to do is go viral or some some silly shit like that. You know Especially not being able to get some kid to flip. Like that's oh, yeah. embarrassing to them. They – I. I guarantee you they'd rather not be embarrassed. They'll lose money, but they can't get back the embarrassment of being called out by some yeah, 18, 19 year old at Vanderbilt. That's, That's true. Bad. What the what in the Tiffany F are we talking about? Here? <laughs> you can't <laughs> flip a Vanderbilt Vanderbilt quarterback, then damn. Exactly, dog. Like the we mob. Send, we've got to send exactly. some new addressers, bro. We need to get we need to get some if anybody, anyone other than who they sent, who they send. Who was it? Was it like, could you please, could you please throw the game? Like I'm saying, <laughs> take bats and threaten kneecaps. What the fuck? I love it, man. I love it. 
going back to the football field real quick. I got to ask you, man. You you were in the trenches, and I know you a nasty motherfucker. I just I just know that just from the time we we didn't work together and, and spoke. I got to ask you this though: What's the nastiest or dirtiest thing you've ever done to a player in a game, whether it's college, NFL, or high school? Keep it real, because this is the porch. Okay, so uh, there's two things. And can, can it be off the football field? I'm intrigued now. Go. All right. So in high school, in high school, I was, I was, I only wrestled for one year and I was pretty good because I was bigger and stronger than everybody. And we're wrestling this big son bitch out of Valley High School is number one in the state. And he's kicking my ass on points and like his, <laughs> his brother is like one of the assistant coaches and shit. And we're in the third period and my coach looks at me and he's like, look, if you don't pin this cat, you're going to lose. Get your shit together and like kind of slaps me a little bit and really pisses me off. So I go out there and I'm like rage mad when I was a kid and I shoot and this guy like sticks me in the forehead and like bends my neck backwards, really pissed me off. But I have my arm around his right leg. So I reach over and get his left leg and I just kind of like pull him into my chest and I stand straight up. This is a heavyweight. So it's 275. And my coach never told me what to do with a heavyweight when you get him on your shoulder because he's never seen a heavyweight pick up a heavyweight. So I pick this son bitch up and I walk him to the middle of the ring and I purposely turn to the valley people and I don't, you're supposed to hit the ground for, I'm supposed to hit the ground first before he does to like, I'm supposed to place him on the ground to keep wrestling. Well, I reach back like I'm this a sack of potatoes, and I swing this some bitch as hard as I can, and I throw him off the ground bad. And his head hits the ground and ricochets. He goes to sleep. He got fucked up real bad. He went off in a stretcher. The whole place erupts. His brother runs off the bench to come fight me, and I clock his ass and drop him right next to his bro. And then I get mauled by the, the 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 group, and it turns into a massive fucking fight at Valley High School. I get arrested. I'm like, I get suspended for the rest of the year. So that's probably the dirtiest shit I've ever done, off, oh, like in a sporting event. That's and like a damn movie, dirty, don't it, Bolo? Yeah, like, like, dude, that's, I just that's visualized intense. everything. He just, I just everything. saw everything. It was it was dirty as fuck, and I did it on purpose. And fuck that guy. And I feel bad about it now at 42, but I did not feel bad about it at 18 at all. And I don't know why. It's just what it is. And in, I'd say in college, I I hit the Kansas quarterback a little late one year and really drove him into the ground hard and broke his collarbone and it protruded out of his skin. That was pretty – and then pushed him down when I got up and he, like, made it one of these sounds, like, <laughs> and, it, uh-huh. like, it, it turned me on a little bit, which is fucking weird. <laughs> um <laughs> and then you know other than but other, in, in the nfl it's harder to do cheap shit because they find you and like yeah. and, and then but as i got into the nfl too the cheap shit kind of dissipated because that's i don't know why i didn't think about it like this when i was in high school and college but that i don't want to ruin i don't want to end someone's career doing cheap shit in the nfl i just wanted to destroy them so that was a fine line to walk but again you know the the high school and the college stuff. <laughs> I, I'm, I can't help it, man. I was aggr- I'm aggressive. What the fuck you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes, sometimes people get fucked up. But uh, <laughs> that boy Matt said he said I ain't gonna lie. He said I broke his carbone, protruded out his body, pushed down on it. And he said I, I got a, I got a little turned, got turned on. on. Not gonna lie. He, he went. He went. He went <laughs> and I was like. Oh, woman noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's, That's hilarious. hilarious man. That's hilarious, <clears throat> man. It gets dirty Gosh. in the trenches, man. Well, I want to move on to our final segment, Bolo. Um, this is our fun segment, uh, uh, another fun segment. But this is a game we would like to play. It's a brand new one called Plead the Fifth. So Plead basically, it. we're going to ask you a list of questions, and you can either answer the question or say, One, two, three, the four, fifth. five, five. Exactly. <laughs> the only caveat is you only get <laughs> Two total plead the fifth that you can use during this entire thing. Dude, you got to choose wisely. How many questions? I don't want to tell you that. Oh, dog, that's fucked up. I don't know how I, I only get two voidos. Okay, all right, I'll tell you. You got eight, you got eight questions. Eight questions? I only get two fucking voids? Yeah. My palms are starting to sweat, not it. Let's go. Yeah, uh-huh. let's do it. Let's do it. So, Bolo, I'm going I'm to let you go first, man. I'm going to okay. jump in next. We're going back and forth from there. All right, here we go, Matt. 
Which NFL coach did you want to punch in the face the most? Josh McDaniels. I fucking hate Josh McDaniels. That was so a person bad, too. Dude. I wouldn't He's mind such seeing a that bitch. person. He yeah. is such a bitch. I hate that guy. <laughs> All right, next question. And now we're going to change the whole fucking flow right now. Yeah. Have you ha- have you ever had a threesome? And if so, when was the last time you did it? Ooh. <laughs> uh, yes. And it was in... I was in college, so 2004. Okay, all right. I was, I was in the fourth times. grade. Okay. How many times? Oh, four. Ooh. Okay. Okay. okay, Matt, number three. I, I, I spit game, dog. Hot fire. <laughs> I love it. Rado days. All right, number three. Who's the one guy in the NFL you couldn't block? Damn. Oh, bro. So trying to block Haloti Nada is like trying to block a, a wall that can move. It, and Chris Jenkins. Chris Jenkins, the older Jenkins, not the, the younger Jenkins, just ran the combine and killed it for Michigan, right? Yeah. The older Jenkins, bro, <laughs> fuck. That guy was a massive pain in the ass. So I would say Haloti and Jenkins were were two of the, yeah, they were massive pain in the ass. Bad, real bad. Like one of those where you'd sit down, because I played defensive line my whole life. So uh-huh. like there's just certain times where you know you're better than the other guy. You're bigger, stronger, faster. And that's what it's like with Jenks and 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 Haloti. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everyone, like every fucking buddy, they're bigger, stronger, faster, and better. So, like, you'd sit down and you'd be like, the coach would be like, why can't we get this guy blocked? And you're like, I don't know, motherfucker. What do you think we should do today to block Chris Jenkins? Give me some uh, Give me some more information. You want me to, like, spit in his fucking ear or something? You want me to give him a foot rub? I'll do anything. Just <laughs> try to keep my quarterback's ass. It ain't working. So, Jenkins, Haloti. Damn. Two dogs right there, bro. Two dogs. Dog. <laughs> All right, you move on. All right. <laughs> we go, <laughs> we go play. Fuck Mary Kill. These three. Oh, I love this game. Yeah. Fuck Mary Kill. John Elway, Nikola Jokic, and Terrell Davis. Oh. Fuck Mary fuck Kill. One of those guys? I have to fuck one of those three? Is it like, can I fuck uh, them out of something instead of like actually fuck them? So it's fuck Mary Kill, but like, let's, let's change can the I, word. Like, let's fuck change them the out word. of a business deal. It's fuck Mary kill, but what we mean really is like I guess start bench cut. Well, why couldn't you say that? Why do I have to fuck John Elway? You weirdo. <laughs> That's what I meant. But the game is the original game is fuck Mary kill. And I, I fucked that up, Bolo. That, the original game is fuck Mary kill. <laughs> but why the, you the second game about fucking like <laughs> is this what you do with Colts? Oh, like the great cult of all time. Hey, I fucked that, that up, Bolo. <laughs> I really want to fuck Reggie Wayne, so I'm going to kill Peyton Manning. Oh, He's man. Insane. I miss Star Bitch. You know uh-huh. what I miss, man? Star oh, Bitch. Star- John <laughs> Elway, <laughs> Nikola Jokic, or Tail Davis. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, dude. I'm going to start. <laughs> I'm sorry, because I fucked that up, bro, so bad. <laughs> In my head, oh, when man. I – like, I knew what I meant, but I went with the original fucking thing. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm so sorry. So – Fuck, fuck, or fuck, Matt. Which one? No, for real. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll start Nicola. I'll bench John Elway, and I'll cut TD. Woo! I didn't think you was going to answer that. I thought you was going to plead the fifth on that one. Nah, man. I'll plead the fifth unless I have to. Damn. I love that. I love that. The, All right. Nicola's just the – the. I, I never seen nothing like him. But he's. I know he's got no vert and, like – all this other shit, but God damn Different it, that though. white boy is cold as fuck, and you know he is, and it's awesome. Bad <laughs> white boy. Oh, a baller. That's a bad motherfucking white boy right there. It's awesome. He is a baller. Okay, number five. Do you believe Coach Prime will bring a national title to Colorado? If so, predict <laughs> which year it will happen. I think that uh, on that, a national title, I'm going to say yes just because I'm a homer. I don't know which year, but that the national title in college football, that shit is hard. So, the, I mean, I would figure they'd have to go undefeated or, well, with the 12-14, they could probably lose one or two games and still get in. Um, I, next year's their shit, there's good an opportunity as any. I mean, Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter should be right at the top of the list for the Heisman. Um, 
you know, Schmitty, you know how I feel about those those guys. I think Travis Hunter might be the best player in college football or the best player in football, period, especially as he matures and grows as a man. And right. Shador, his last name is Sanders. I mean, he's got a fucking cannon. He does a great job. Uh, last year, that team wins no games without him, and they were competitive in almost all of them. I I, I think Shador is going to really tear it up next year. If they're going to win it, next year is probably the best opportunity. Mm. It's right here, Thank Bolo, you. live on the porch. You heard what he said. So Bookmark it. Love Book it. Period. Back. Love it. All right, man. Shit. Next question. Next question, Matt. What's your favorite porn category and why? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. why why I, I don't know man there's just something about little people it's <laughs> something well, about little that gets me little, fucking little going. people little people little parts but big hearts right oh my god this that is hilarious crazy. man <laughs> no man i mean i'm not saying that's true but i'm also saying it's not i ain't pleading the fifth fuck your game I'm so that was just see nah see that <laughs> bolo that was his way of pleading the fifth without pleading the fifth because uh -huh. that's not his real answer uh -huh. that's plead the fifth fuck it that he got he got one more that's that's his uh -huh. plead the fifth. he think he's slick uh -huh. all right below we got two more okay questions. lucky number seven if you had the option to pancake block either joe biden or donald trump oh. which one would you choose Fucking Biden for sure, bro. He wouldn't even remember. <laughs> I could get, I could really fuck him up, and he'd just oh, be like, well, "What's that, a <laughs> Man, You might, you hit him too hard. He might just evaporate, and turn straight to dust. <laughs> if you I mean, pick, if you pick a Trump, you know, some be like, his, "Oh my gosh, I got to pick <laughs> Disney." Trump, Trump, Trump might fucking line up and kick set a motherfucker. He's, you know, that shit. You know, don't put it past Donald, but. I'll, uh, I'd rather hit Biden. I don't, I, I don't like either of them really. I'm right in the, I'm in the middle. I think that both sides are pretty fucking crazy. Um, that's fair. But at the same time, I'm, I'm gonna vote for Trump because I like money. Mm. That's um, fair. that's pretty much the only reason I'm doing it because I, you know, the the other side. Holy God, the tax break, the the tax breaks my ass. They're taxing the shit out of people these days. So I, you know, I, I think that uh, Biden. Bro, just see if I could carry Tate office linebacker Joe Biden, that would be fucking awesome. Can you imagine <laughs> like running full speed and just laying into Papa, just fucking lifting him up <laughs> right to the ground, having the whole free world be like, <laughs> that would be so fucking awesome. You know, you, um, you know what happens next to you, though, right? Like, yeah, I get fucking shot or tasered or like something. instantly. Inst yeah, but, instantly. but then again. Uh, if they, they're going to let me run him over and then taser me, it's the win-win, dog. That's true. That's true. That's I'll true. take that. I'm I'm pretty sure one hit will probably take him out. Yeah. I've yeah, gotten so tased good. before, and it took, it took them twice. They hit me once, and I just went, ah! and then he hit me again, and I woke up in jail. Oh, shit. Ew, man. The All right, man, time, last though, one. It, it, was, it was cool. My feelings kind of got hot. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't test it again, though, Matt. All right, last no. one, last one. I got a list of different names. I'll say Ooh. their name, and you just tell me the first word that comes to your mind. Like, don't even fucking think. Just the first word that comes to your mind. Okay. Max Crosby. Baba Yaga. Trent Williams. The best. Snoop Dogg. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, let's see. Long Beach. Little Wayne. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, let's see. Little Wayne, Birdman, Jr. Hey, Megan Good, Megan, uh, Megan Good, the black girl with the ass. <laughs> I think that's Meg the Stallion. She, now that, that she's bad too, but Megan Good is she not fine ass black girl? She is fine. She, she is, is fine. fine. No, yeah, she Megan fine. Good, man, shit. What, <laughs> what you want, baby? <laughs> Anything you want. Peace. Peace. Oh, Karen, Karen Steph is better, better known as Superhead. Who the fuck is that? Lisa Ann. Who's that? Josh McDaniels. Fuck boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There we go. Hey, he did a good job. Hey, he only used one piece of fifth, technically. Star? You said what? Six and seven. Yeah, you got you to gotta Google six and seven after. He did, after just Google six and seven. Off. I don't even want to tell you who they are. Just Google six and seven. I was. Oh, you, you, okay. I, no problem. 
I got maybe, it. Pri- I got maybe, maybe private, I private got browser though, Matt. Corinne Stephens, do do that one first, and then um, yeah. and you can do Lisa Ann second. I would just suggest using in- incognito mode, just just because no particular reason. What incognito mode? There's that's a thing. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't school. worry about. Got a school. Hey, I don't maybe. care what's on my phone. Shit. Mm, yeah, but world. it's it's still useful to put that incognito on there just so it don't be in your Google search history. And you can, I'll have to talk to you <laughs> offline. I'll talk to you yeah, offline. I know what it is. The full game. You explain it. Silly. Nick Matt, man, this has been fun, man. <laughs> we learned about you. We, we learned about you, what what made Matt who he is today. The business, the father, the entrepreneur, the athlete. Uh, the friend, the son, all th- the backhand, Chicago backhand, the all things, man. We learned our, everything. We appreciate you for joining the porch. Any final words you want to throw to the people? Let them know where they can follow you. Anything you want to promote, man? Before we 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 you know get up out of here. Yeah, check out everything at Six Zero Academy. Uh, Six Zero Academy, Six Zero Strength dot com. Uh, we're changing lives on the daily. Uh, the TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, at Six Zero Academy. We're going to be blowing that up, obviously. Uh, and I appreciate you guys. That was awesome, and I'd love to do it again one day. And, Schmitty, I will see you bright and early with that ugly son of a bitch, JB. Man, <laughs> yes, you will, man. That, yes, that will. is one ugly son of a bitch, dude. He I'll is ugly, you. man. He's a quarterback, too. <laughs> he's naturally soft. He's a quarterback. Exactly. Soft and ugly at the same time. Oh, bad, my God. Bad, bad. bad combination, man. Bad combination. All right, we appreciate you, people. my guy. Bolo, how do we end this show, Bolo? Make sure the best you is the best you, and we out. Peace. Peace.